Tony, you're certainly right. Uh, NASA got a big booster shot of adre adrenaline and enthusiasm, so to speak, from this launch. The key is, I guess, whether it will carry on long after the nine days, and you've got a certainly exciting nine days ahead of you there at uh, Houston at the Johnson Space Center. Again, to uh, reiterate the, uh, the one problem, uh, a potential problem, a drag chute door may have come off uh, during liftoff, uh, the extreme vibration of liftoff. That's a new one. That's never happened before that I can recall. Uh, not at this point considered to be a serious, serious problem, but they're still working it. No talk at this point of any impact to the length of the mission, but it's an issue that we are certainly going to have to keep following here as the NASA engineers delve into exactly what happened on liftoff and if indeed it is a, a drag chute problem. The astronauts in orbit going about their business now. John Glenn going around the world. This is John Zarella reporting live from the Kennedy Space Center. Back to you, Lou. Natalie. John, about the uh, problem with the hatch, uh, I know it wasn't part of the mission, but are all shuttle flights, you may not know the answer to this, prepared for a spacewalk if need be? There's emergency contingencies that uh, someone has always done a spacewalk if absolutely necessary. They can usually do it. I don't know that on this mission they're equipped with the suits because they have to carry the special pressurized suits to go outside to actually do the evaluation of what might happen. But I believe that in all cases there are at least a couple of astronauts checked out who can do an EVA if an emergency situation were to occur. That would be, uh, and on most shuttle flights, I assume this would be the same. All right, John Zarella down at the Kennedy Space Center keeping watch. Natalie? Huge crowds gathered along roadsides, beaches, and all sorts of other places near Kennedy Space Center to watch the shuttle launch. CNN's Mark Potter was right there with them. Shortly after the liftoff, the crowds began to dissipate. The crowds that had been here for eight hours waiting for this uh, launch uh, said that they were surely not disappointed. This was a very exciting day for them. We had uh, 300,000 people, according to tourism officials here in the Brevard County area, watching this launch. They crowded the roads, uh, they crowded the beaches, the, uh, the docks, any place that they could find a place to stop, they did, and they watched this launch. The uh, uh, Sheriff's Department says that there were really no major problems despite this huge crowd. Everyone seemed to get along just fine. Uh, there were no uh, major injuries, anything like that. Some major traffic tie-ups, and those are still expected to continue as people leave this area. But uh, it was, all in all, a really uh, a spectacular day for people. Our coverage has been provided by the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes, which has been helping us with our special coverage. And uh, the final point that I would like to make is that the people here said that they had to put up with the sun, they had to put up with crowds, but in the end, after seeing the liftoff, they knew that this was a very special day, and they're glad they came here. We heard the word spectacular, uh, extravagant, anything that they could say that described their emotion, all of which were very high. People were waving flags, cheering, some people weeping, uh, because this was such an emotional moment. A big day, and certainly it met and exceeded their expectations. This is Mark Potter, CNN, in Titusville. And we're getting our first live pictures from the shuttle right now up in space. What we're looking at, and it's a little difficult to determine what it is exactly, but we understand the cargo bay doors are open. Once the shuttle gets up there, they want to cool things down, and that's what they've done. They've opened the uh, cargo bay doors back there where the uh, space lab is, where John Glenn will be working his science project on this mission. These are live pictures from Discovery. We were talking earlier really about the live the pictures of, of the astronaut. The camera pointed at the astronauts during Discovery liftoff. I don't know if that was a tape on a previous mission or if we have yet to see those pictures or if they didn't do it this time. Uh, but uh, uh, we are continuing to follow this uh, very special day of John Glenn's return to space, and our special coverage will continue here in just a moment. And apparently, we're waiting for that tape, Lou, of that cockpit shot as the shuttle blasts off. So as soon as we get it, we'll bring that to you. This uh, this uh, mission is is more than nostalgia. There's science involved, and we intend to get into more of that ahead as we continue our special coverage. There appears to be absolutely no hazard to the vehicle.
During the Discovery mission, John Glenn will be participating in 10 experiments on the effects of weightlessness on the human body. And our Dr. Steve Salvatore looks now at what the space experiments could mean for those of us with our feet firmly on the ground. When John Glenn took his first space flight 36 years ago, doctors were only guessing what would happen to human beings in space. In 1962, some people thought that when he went into outer space, there would be an elongation of the eyeball, that there would be uh, changes in the fluid dynamics in the inner ear. But a lot has changed since then. Years of medical experiments aboard rocket ships and space shuttles have given doctors a better understanding about how weightlessness affects the human body. And they found an interesting correlation. Some of the issues, problems, biological phenomena which are common with aging uh, have similarities or parallels in changes which occur in space and flight. To further test those similarities, Glenn will be the subject of a variety of medical experiments to test balance, dizziness, and inner ear changes. The ultimate application of this information would be to design interventions, countermeasures, or preventions to prevent the loss of muscle mass, the loss of strength, to preserve function in older people as they age on Earth, as well as for those who will fly under conditions of weightlessness. But critics say this medical research isn't research at all. This scientific experiment isn't going to tell you about the relationship between aging and the deterioration of the body from weightlessness. It's going to tell you about the comparison of the deterioration of body and weightlessness and John Glenn. But NASA and the National Institute on Aging disagree and say while they don't expect to draw major conclusions from the mission, they do hope to find some clues. The mission will have at least one conclusive finding, that people in their later years can still demonstrate strength, capability, and valor. And while we lose some things as we get older, we never lose the right stuff. Dr. Steve Salvatore, CNN New York. This was, in, in one aspect, truly a nostalgic uh, mission today. It had something for everybody, though. Some of us of a certain age uh, were witnessing uh, John Glenn uh, God, and wishing him Godspeed for the second time. Right. <laughs> and some folks were just seeing him uh, race into space for the first time today, including some Houston grade schoolers. And here they are. We'll have more after this. Hello. Bill, when you're in the vehicle during the ascent, we'll tend to push you back, roll, and then we, uh, later in the flight, we use the uh, telling the crew exactly what it is they have to do. News. CNN is absorbed in space today. We're continuing with our special report. John Glenn returns to space. That cancels out Burden of Proof, which will be seen again tomorrow. The shuttle finally lifted off at 2.20 p.m. Eastern this afternoon. Everything going well, except that it seems that a drag chute door didn't make it into space. And John Zarell has been checking that out at Kennedy Space Center. John? Natalie has certainly had an almost picture-perfect day. A couple of minor problems, some aircraft, airplanes that were in the actual area. They had to clear them out before they could lift off. A minor technical glitch, but nothing that was a showstopper. And uh, though now, following a briefing this afternoon, a uh, post-launch briefing, we find out that indeed there may be an issue that they are working. Uh, what uh, the problem is, is with a drag chute door, the vibration on liftoff apparently jarred loose, may have not completely confirmed, but may have jarred loose a, a, a door, a drag chute door. Now, the drag chute door is located underneath the tail section of the plane, up under here, the space plane. Now, at some point, they believe it could have possibly hit one of the engines as it flew off. There's no indication right now that of any severe damage to the vehicle, no indication that this means that they are going to have to shorten this mission, nothing like that. Engineers are working the problem. They have used the drag chute on landings in crosswinds and severe weather conditions, but they have uh, only used it in the last 40-odd missions. The first 50 shuttle flights, they never used it at all, so it's, they can do without it. And they do not believe that it is an issue where it might deploy in space or it might deploy on landing so they're not overly concerned with that at this particular point in time of course again it was a wonderful day here